Hello everybody, my name is Jaime Medina and today we're going to talk about the speech organs and their functions. So let's begin. There are several organs involved in speech. Among these are the lips, the tongue, the teeth, the nose, the palate, the trachea, the larynx and the pharynx. These are not the only organs involved in speech but they are some of the most important ones. So, uh, let me introduce you to Oscar. Oscar is the name of uh, is the name we usually use to refer to this fellow over here, who shows us the different organs that are involved in speech and their specific location. So, how do human beings produce sound? How do they produce voice, speech? Let's begin with the diaphragm. The diaphragm is right over here. Um, this organ. Uh, its function is basically, what, what does it, it, it expands and it contracts. When it expands, it sucks air into the lungs. And when it contracts, it pushes air out of the lungs. So basically over here, the lungs store the air. Uh, they also distribute oxygen to our bloodstream, yes. But in the case of speech, they store air. So. Um, when air is pushed out by the contraction of the diaphragm, it goes through the trachea and it meets the larynx, the larynx, this section over here. In the larynx, we'll find the epiglottis. And in the epiglottis, we will find the vocal cords, which are responsible for producing sound. So, let's look at the epiglottis in detail. This is, a, this, is a, this is the epiglottis when we open our mouth and this is the zoomed in view of the epiglottis. It's composed by the vocal cords and, um, and over here we can see the trachea. Um, the vocal cords, like I said before, are the ones that produce sound. They produced voice, voiced and voiceless sounds. So two of them, voiced and voiceless sounds. The, for, for, for the production of the voiced sounds, the vocal cords, um, they exert pressure over the air coming out and so they close a little bit. They just close a little bit, leaving enough space for the air to come out, thus causing the vocal cords to vibrate. And when they produce voiceless sounds, they open completely. The air meets no resistance, therefore, the vocal cords don't vibrate. We'll notice that when we produce uh, voiceless sounds, our Adam's apple does not vibrate. So let's go over here, Adam's apple. So when we produce uh, voiceless sounds, it doesn't vibrate. But when we produce when we produce voiced sounds, it vibrates. The most classical example is the th sound, whereas when we produce the voiced th. Mm, our, our Adam's apple vibrates and when we produce the voiceless TH in words such as three uh, does not make our, our throat or our Adam's apple vibrate. So that's all about uh, the larynx and the epiglottis. Um, when the air goes out of the tr uh, through the trachea into the larynx and finally over here into the mouth or nasal cavity so this is the mouth cavity, this is the nasal cavity, um, well, that's where the tongue starts playing a role in the production of speech as well. So let's look at the tongue in detail. So the tongue is, is composed by the dorsum, which is right, right there, the center, the front, and the apex. The apex is also referred to as the tip of the tongue. And um, with, the, with the tip of the tongue, we produce sounds such as T. So when, when uh, the tip of our tongue touches our alve alveoli, which I'll show you later on what it is, uh, we produce the T sound. Uh, let me show you right here. So this is, this is the side view of the tongue, this is the tip of the tongue, and this is the alveoli over here. So when the tip of the tongue touches the alveoli, um, we produce sounds such as T. Okay, now let's go back to the front of the tongue, which is right here. The front of the tongue. 
With the front of the tongue, we produce sounds such as z, y, 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 like the y, the, the y sound, year. Um, what happens is that the front of the tongue touches the hard palate and we produce such sounds. So the air coming out of the trachea goes through the epiglottis, uh, up it goes, and then over here is where it meets um, what we call a constriction and we produce the E sound. And with the dorsum, we produce sounds such as K and G. So, basically, uh, we produce it, as I said, with the dorsum of the tongue. So, what uh, the, the constriction of the air coming out of the trachea, of the lungs, um, the constriction is performed here, where the tongue um, kind of exerts pressure over the air against the soft palate, thus producing j or k. The difference between these two sounds is that one is voiced and one is voiceless. The j sound is voiced, so meaning it produces a vibration over here, whereas the k sound k is not voiced. And um, this is where we find the difference between both vowels and um, and consonants. So for the vowels, the air comes out, goes through the vocal cords, yes, out into the vocal cavity or into the nasal cavity, and it comes out and it means no, no constriction when we produce vowel sounds. It doesn't mean any constriction from the tongue, from the lips, from the teeth, from nowhere. Whereas uh, consonants, they meet and uh, they, they, they always meet um, a constriction when, when leaving our speech organs. So that's one of, I insist, that's one of the differences between vowels. Well, the, the, the big difference, I would say, between vowels and consonants. So let's go back. Um, as I said before, there are other organs involved in the production of, um, of speech, such as the teeth, the lips, and the nose. Also, the, uh, the, the uvula is responsible for some sounds. Uh, however, in English, we don't have sounds, or yes, they don't have any sounds uh, in which they would require the use of the uvula. Okay, that was all for today. Thank you for listening, and uh, I hope it was clear for you. Thank you very much. May you have a very good rest of the day.